I V M. <laughs> if you are joining Why? us from our last episode, uh, you know that <clears throat> I got some germs on the train. That's not where I got my germs. Mine is just sheer exhaustion. Exactly, Aishi. Welcome, uh, everyone, listeners. Welcome oh, hi, hi. to <laughs> this episode of Agla Station Adulthood. You can tell by the quality of our vocalizes, vocalizes, vocals. Our vocals is that uh, we are both under the weather and under some other kind of vocal duress. Yeah, my I'll admit I've not fallen sick out of any external thing. This is purely my own fault. Um, it was my best friend's wedding, and you enjoyed like anything. Really went ham. Yeah, and now my body has decided to punish me. It's Bas, okay. It happens. Hai. Part of adulthood, as they say. Yeah, yeah. Got up and went. Did tiffin everything this morning. Went to work. Very nice. And as a, as I've gotten to work, my colleague sits, sits next to me. Is like. Oh, so the wedding was a hard one, and I was like, "Yep." He's saying it's showing. <laughs> Bichari, it's oh, okay. You not slept all so much. No, yeah, I haven't really slept much in the last oh, couple of days. It's okay, but it's okay. I'm enjoying this sultry yeah, voice. I'm really digging this vibe. So, listeners, if you like this voice, let me know. <laughs> we'll get someone to auto tune the next episode. Yeah, so we'll always sound sexy. So welcome. Today's episode is a special one because it is gonna be around. And she's shaking her head at me. Um, this episode. Yeah, no, I'm saying like uh, talk about it normally. Yeah, Just because it's a normal. Announce it. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. It's, but it's a special episode also. Oh, okay. like. Anyway, so uh, we're going to talk about it's Valentine's Day approaching. You know, <laughs> that's why I was going to yeah, say it's a okay, special episode. Way. Ayushi, sorry, she is also now nah, just jing me. So Valentine's Day is around the corner. Like when this episode drops, it's going to be that dreaded V Day here, there, and everywhere. It's not dreaded, really. Why? It, it's become like a whole thing of just like commercializing and making money off. But uh, everything day. has become that. It depends on how you interact with. Some- I'm this is coming from someone who has spent the better part of my life saying Valentine's Day is like made up by card companies. Agreed. That was my byline for 25 years I think. Yeah. But now I think in terms of just in what the world needs If there is one day where you just celebrate love oh in my whatever God, yes. shape and form, we need more of those days. Then we should have one every month, I feel. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's it's one of like people celebrate all kinds of things and everything is commercialized. Let's not act. True. So True, true, true. Sorry, huh? You are right. Valentine's Day is nice. And Aishi and I, we are doing a Galentine's, Galentine's Day, Day, which, which is, is going to be great. Really special for me personally because this is the kind of supportive female friendship situation I need in my life anyway. Yeah, and we do a lot of this like even if it's like small just gifting each other, it's always so nice because the whole process is like I thought of you, I got you something to make you feel special. Christmas, yeah. Valentine's Day, we do so, a bunch. So, yeah, Valentine's anyway, Day can be celebrated in many different ways also. Like yes. you know, it doesn't have to be the traditional oh main uske liye phool leke aaya, fir main usko date pe le gaya. Sorry, it's 2020. Yeah, anything is whatever goes. Whatever goes. Whatever floats your boat. Yeah. And on that note, <laughs> we're going to speak about um a, a little bit about sexuality and uh, pleasure and desire today, mm. which uh, is something which I think baby adults are either have already discovered within themselves or in the process of fully exploring and it's a very very integral part of uh, a human being's journey. and growth and development in general. Oh my god, yes. So here we are going to talk about sexuality, desire, pleasure, um female pleasure. We're going to focus a bit on that because I, I mean that's what we talk know. about it enough. Yes. And actually we only know that kind of yeah, pleasure because so. don't have penis. <laughs> um so yeah. We want to do a bit of flag posting, Aishi, or that's fine. They're already hooked because sex sells, eh? Yeah. Like yeah, yeah, we want to listen to this episode. Um we can we can do some sign posting but uh i i'm not really sure whether it's i think this is more of a free flowing conversation because there's a lot of things that we wanted to discuss but we're definitely going to do some statistical um fact dropping in terms of the indian population and our sex demography so you have indian stats aishi because yeah. i couldn't find any no, i only I have foreign stats no but i got from uh, the nfhs no the national family health survey sick one 
So, should, do you want to kick us off with these stats? Sure. As per or should we discuss? Uh, since since this is an episode about pleasure, this brings me great pleasure to sharing do the statistics. Stats. <laughs> I love it. Um, and everyone's pleasure is different, you know. Yeah. As we will find out. So, um, some of the uh, in India, they have the National Family Health Survey, which is conducted every couple of years. The last one was in 2015-16. Mm-hmm. And the next one is supposed to be the 18-19 survey, right. actually. And um, But till about March of 2019, they still had, is when the last um, tenders were put out for all this, the work and the yeah. logistics support that goes into it. So it'll be, it's going to be, con- it's going to be conducted Right now, like over the last couple months and now. So it'll be, it'll I think, a while before the new one comes out. comes out. Okay. So mainly what I have is based on the 16-17 one. Right. 15-16 one. Okay. Um, basically, this in combination with the demographic and health surveys, which are conducted, uh, it's, uh, yeah, which are conducted across South America, North America, Asia, and um, your, and Australia. Hmm. Which is, they're just called the demographic and health surveys. So, in combination of these, these are some facts about the Indian sexual appetite and um, lifestyle. Right. Do tell. So, actually, um, even though we are a very populous nation, we are not in the higher bracket of sexual frequency. Okay. So, Indians, in terms of the survey, Indians who have been sexually active in the last four weeks, it's only about forty-seven to forty-eight percent of our population. In four weeks, only half our population has got laid. Yeah, but that's quite odd because according to like a UNICEF report back in, I think this was 2016, India has a birth rate of of about 69,000 babies a day. (laughs) (laughs) So, 69,000 babies a day. I knew you would like that. I'm losing my mind. I'm sorry, I'm shouting. She's got a headache and she's like, stop it, she's going to faint. But, um, right, so so you can see that there's clearly some disconnect. Disparity. Yeah, yeah. there's some disparity there. Um, To give you some context, like a country like Afghanistan is at 86 to 93% of people having been sexually active in the last four weeks. Oh. Yeah, so we're pretty low down on the list. People in Kabul are just going at it. <laughs> wow, Kabul fiza. Yeah, Kabul fiza. <laughs> but um, also other questions like extramarital affairs. Women are at 1%. In India? Yeah, Obviously, and men are at like 2%. Only 2% of men in India have extramarital affairs. Okay, but my thing with this part of the survey is that I don't think people are going to be very honest Obviously about not. that question. So that could be very skewed. But again, it's on the very lower end, right? And the age bracket that they're talking about for extramarital affairs is um, 18 to 30. Sweet. Because of course, all these poor children have been married off at these yeah, ridiculous but ages. But then for... And then for premarital sex, actually, women are only at 3% and men are at about 11%. And for this, the age bracket is 15 to 24. Because you're thinking of premarital, right? So again, it's not a country that's having a ve- that has a very high sexual frequency, but there's a huge population boom. So that's something that we can discuss as well, because um, it ties into how we think about sex in the act if it's just about procreation and you know reproduction as opposed to like pleasure and enjoyment yeah there's a huge conversation to be had I feel in India um there's also some other stuff that I can share is that female in rural India actually have sex before females in urban India Mm, and that's roughly about two years before yeah and uh they actually have a way higher frequency of sex as well and they have a higher partner rate. Right. And these are this is very interesting to know because you would think that it's actually in the urban population that they're f- that people are far more sexually liberal. But as per your experience through your stuff that you did with Vice and with the Rakshan Project, what you've been learning, and we can go into that in a bit, is that actually um, Indian women in rural settings are rather sexually independent and uh, have a sex drive. Which they are trying to explore and is being explored. Um, 
which is something that we can talk about in terms of whether that's consensual or forced and that's yeah. a whole other conversation yeah. i'm not denying yeah. it but i'm saying statistically they also i do want to say that this is from the nfhs in terms of they have sex before urban women but that's also because a marriage is age in early, rural india yeah, is way yeah. earlier yeah. than urban women again yeah. but what was surprising to me was more the frequency rate and the fact that they have more partners on average yeah that is pretty interesting that is very interesting to me um so these are kind of the statistics that we're moving with uh to remember throughout the episode again is that frequency is low but our birth rate is very high so there's that disconnect there's a huge gap in conversation that we need to have is because you have to de- debunk the idea that um sex and sexual acts are only for a uh, procreation basis and i don't think india believes that either that it's only for procreation I because our history suggests is, suggests otherwise, otherwise exactly yeah. okay this is a um, a lot to debunk must on debunking i just i i don't say the onus is on us to debunk no no it. of course not but <laughs> yeah it's a conversation i think we can all have together yeah, yeah. as a community I think there are so many uh, reasons also why the survey has read the way it does especially like I remember when I was shooting for sex rated people are just damn shy to talk about it and I mean case in point I yeah, did not want to wa- talk about this to our listeners so I, I have been yeah. wanting to do an episode on sexuality pleasure xyz for a long time just because I think it's a very important part of our journey as I said earlier but uh, I she I I did not want to do it. I don't I still don't want to do this episode, but I had to find a way to be okay with it and find a way to give my input which was my statistics. And you don't want to do it because um because I'm not comfortable discussing my first of all my own uh, experiences. Nobody's asking you to. I know. Yeah. Uh and I wouldn't have either. Yeah. Um but I'm also not uh, comfortable discussing this as a topic on such a large public platform because right. I think it's a very private discussion to have and when I say private I'm more than happy to talk about um this entire like say genre if you were to pick yeah. it with my friends with my family with my um close in a room with friends and a room with trusted people yeah, yeah and I'm a very free and open person in those spaces but on a public platform I don't I don't want to engage with it. And you can understand that even like if you follow me on Instagram I don't even post pictures of myself or my friends like it's very rare on this more story format because I don't like to share so much. Mm. Which is ironic given that I have a podcast where we just talk about our own lives mm. and that's changing now as I'm getting more confident with it. But that way I'm very private about these things. But the way that you explained it to me was uh Unfortunately for me I agreed which is that it's a very important milestone in your adult development yeah. and it's something we should talk about because I think this we can also talk about consent which that I feel very strongly about <laughs> so I'm happy to do it I'm here I'm here for it I'm here for She's it She's here to support in whatever way she can yeah, so now But you're uh, just on. on this note of whatever I want to just tell our listeners if they haven't still watched Sex Education season 1 and 2 on Netflix I recommend that oh, show okay. more than life currently especially if you're a young person in this country or anywhere really if we have listeners from abroad who knows <laughs> <laughs> but please watch sex education on Netflix it's a very good show and um I wish it existed when we were teenagers also Netflix pay us matlab ha matlab you can you can hire us for any work we are ready um so yeah sex education itself is very yeah. different as a whole topic and that is one other problem that it doesn't exist in our country but on a family level i mean my parents gave uh, natasha and i a talk we mm. were given this kind of sex education talk but it was again colored with my parents own uh, reservations and this and that but whatever we got some information which is a lot more than i think most kids in this country get growing up yeah definitely but um i had like i was obsessed with reading as a kid i mean i i still read a lot but uh i used to have encyclopedias these uh-huh. were my favorite books ever uh-huh. uh i used to go to sleep with an encyclopedia like a torch underneath oh, the bed sweet. yeah it was sad but it was good and um there was a whole section on childbirth and how babies are born love that so i kind of got With diagrams yeah 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 so i knew 
from a very young age more the science of it and I was like oh this is how it goes down and then based on a conversation that we had at school I remember when you were given the talk 7th standard the we yeah. had a talk um, but my mom had already told me about like having your period and yeah, stuff yeah. like that yeah uh, we didn't really have a birds and the bees conversation because as a child, I just went up to them and asked them because I'd been reading. Correct. And they were kind of like, well, if it's in an encyclopedia, then that's true. That's what you read. Is what, that's a fact. That's, that's how what it, it is. Exactly. So it, it wasn't like a huge conversation. I was just like, cool. That's how babies are born. It's not in mom's stomach. <laughs> and I'm going to be like a little bit of a tap once a week for a month. I mean, once every, once a month, a month for, for a, a week. week. My man. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, but you're right that this is not a conversation people have because it's again, it's taboo. Yeah. And this is what I actually personally, my biggest thing is the mm. shame that it's yeah. shrouded in, in our country and not just in the Samaj as we speak of. It's no, no, even in, between in homes, educated, yeah. intelligent people. Also, there is a degree of shame attached to it when I think that's BS because the shit is natural AF. Yeah. And, um, I think it does go back to I, I was discussing with Ritika earlier mm. um, is a difference between shame mm. and shaming yes because I think now with uh, with what happens is uh, in this sort of, I don't know how to put this maybe in the most politically correct way okay but hear me out with yes. this thought is that in the search and pursuit of being woke uh-huh you have to be sexual or that you have to be comfortable with talking about sexuality, your own sexuality and um, sex at large. And that makes you seem a little bit more woke than people who don't choose to do that. And I'm telling you because I'm saying based on not just like on Instagram and stuff. I'm In saying real life. real life plus um, like Twitter. Like I'm I'm big on Twitter. I, I love it as an app. And I also, I think I hate it in equal measure. But you know, that, like there's a lot of young brown girls on Twitter. Yes. As there should be. Yes. Young women, my age, younger than me, older than me. Love it. And a lot of them, uh, like a lot of their um, tweets or their experiences sometimes are very hypersexualized to the point of like, well, I'm really woke and I'm a 2020. So I'm 2020 woman. So I'm not going to be like shamed and not talking about it. And if some, if women comment being like, you know what, to be honest, I'm not comfortable with this discussion. It's like, well, get comfortable with it. You know, this is where we're at. It's time to reclaim it. That's fine. And like I said, I'm just as, I hate the word woke, but aware and up to date with how things work in the real life. And I'm a very independent and feminist person. But I don't like this idea that if you don't like to talk about sex, that means you're a very like conservative, prudish like person who's like submitting to the patriarchy. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And I also agree with you. Ah, right. I, I thought you disagreed no, with me. I was no, no. Like, ah. I mean, see, you can't shame anyone for anything. That's. I'm saying the op- like in in pursuit of our sexual freedom, we do not need to shame people who do not wish to be. Uh, but you know, you, out there with it. We have to also examine ourselves, Ayushi, because there is, even inside me, there is a large amount of stigma I'm still trying to undo. Perhaps. That, so we need to recognize that. And I think these people who are overtly pushing it, they you know, might be pushing it so that someone who's genuinely like unable to even utter the word sex, for example, or unable to call her own vagina a vagina. Right. And instead of calling it by XYZ name, oh, Suzuki Jaga, this, that, and like, hmm. my PP, my VV. Like, what are these words? What are these words? You say hand, you say nose, you say head. You can say vagina also. What's the big deal? So, yeah, these girls who, or these people or these woke young millennials who are extra out there, they're not maybe for people like you who already have the awareness. And that's absolutely right. And maybe that is my own, uh, that's a feedback that I should take and not be like, uh, quote unquote, triggered by it. Absolutely. To be because like, there's oh, your own shame is... acting up from inside somewhere. No, I'm not saying you have any, I don't know. We no, all no, do to some degree. I'm, I'm sure that there's shame in like in many things that you just carry with you on an internal, like a human guilt yes, level. Yes. But I'm, I think we said it in the beginning. It's a conversation like I'm, I have with my parents, with my friends. I have a lot of confidence in myself, in my own sexuality and my own spectrum of emotions mm. and what I'm comfortable and not comfortable with. You're right that maybe these things aren't targeted to someone like me and it's important for people to exist so that you can ha- open the conversation around it. 
but I still stand by what I say is that I don't think that you need you don't have to um talk about sex to be woke I yeah, agree with you I just don't think that is something that you need to uh, like push onto other people I totally agree with you yeah. and if and if men want to talk about sex just in the same free way that women want to talk about sex that should be allowed as well like I know that you know what I'm trying to say is that today when when a man talks about sexuality automatically you you kind of get triggered because we have been repressed so much and there is so much fear in that male dominance aggression and power which has invaded sex in at least in India so that you're like no you don't get to have that say but then if we get to have the say they should it should be an equal platform for everyone to share their desire no that i agree with i don't think anybody's shaming any other genders for sharing their uh Not shaming, Desires. but see, that's something. Look, we're so limited by these words of shaming and cancelled and woke and all. I'm just trying to say that everyone should be allowed to be where they are on their spectrum of comfort. For that's what I'm trying to say. I mean, I agree with you 100%. Uh-huh. It's a deeply personal journey. Yeah, sexuality in itself. Firstly, sexuality is different for every person, and right. sexuality is not limited to your sexual behavior. Yes, it transcends to. your other behavior also how you view other people how you treat other people how you treat yourself the way you function in like the world it all creeps in sexuality so um it is a very personal thing and my entire point in life of even talking about it is to encourage people to go on their own journeys so yes matlab you don't tell me tum kya kar rahi ho nahi 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 but Lekin. you please find out for yourself because it's your body and it's totally your journey like nobody should be able to tell you or nobody should ever try to dictate ki sexuality should mean this for you exactly i fully agree with you on that and i think everyone should create and this is something that you have to take the onus on yourself i think that's very very uh definite in that perspective is that take that uh responsibility to create that environment for yourself yeah. where you can explore xyz exactly. whatever it is Great. On that note, shall we take a little break? Yeah. Listeners, go explore a little bit. Come back. We have more to share. It's not that long a break. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everybody! Welcome to another amazing, awesome week on the IVM Podcast Network. If you aren't following on social media, please do. We're IVM Podcast on all the major platforms: at Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. We'd like to thank our sponsors this week, HDFC Life, for coming on board, and we'd like to thank the extended association we have with Storytel. If you work for a brand that you think would uh, benefit from advertising on IVM, why haven't you reached out to us yet? Please do. So I wanted to announce two new shows we got releasing this week. The first is Yudha, the Indian military history podcast, and the second is Beyond Cliche. Yudha is a podcast hosted by Anirudh Kanisetti, host of Echoes of India, and Aditya Ramnathan, who hosts All Things Policy. They explore the darker, blood-splattered side of India beyond Bollywood and school textbooks. This is military history of the subcontinent the way it was meant to be told. Stay tuned for the first episode releasing this Wednesday on the twelfth. You will not be disappointed. On our second new show this week, Beyond Cliche, Almas Virani, speaker, author, and coach, starts conversations around bending gender norms and stereotypes as she interviews guests who have challenged these roles through their distinctive journey. First episode for this comes out on Thursday, the thirteenth of February. Again, really fun show. I think you'll like it. On Cyrus says, Cyrus sits down with Abbas Momin, who is moving on from IVM. They discuss how Abbas are doing comedy, why he is the odd one out in his family of dentists, and his journey with IVM and what's going forward for him. This week on Simplify, the gang talk about Marudu Apartments in Kerala. On the Habit Coach, Ashton takes you through ten habits for 2020 and beyond. On IVM Likes, Abbas Madhuri and Ritika are joined by Lakshmi Krishnan, host of Lit Nama, to talk about their favorite pieces of literature. On Lit Nama, Lakshmi is joined by stand-up comedian and podcast producer Abbas Momin, who is on his farewell tour at IVM to discuss Twitter trends, recent hashtags, and its political impact. On the Prakriti podcast, Anupam Manur talks to Pawan about how India's economy can be brought back on track. On Tapri Tales, Madhuri weaves a tale around a conversation between three friends. On the Traveling Professors podcast, host Siddharth talks about B two B marketing as tribal marketing. On GBCD, Sunetra and Farah discuss if there can be one happily ever after, or if the idea keeps evolving and changing. And lastly, we'd like to wish Abbas the best of luck in the future. As you can tell, he's on a number of episodes this week, so you are definitely going to hear him. I'm sure he'll be back, and we wish him all the best in all his future endeavors. Well, that sounds like we are writing a recommendation, but no, we really are going to miss him, and we wish him all the best. And with that, let's get you back to your show. Welcome back. Uh, Kesara explorations. 
very quick i'm sure <laughs> actually nahi amit bahut advertise karta hai <laughs> so, so many shows <laughs> welcome back uh, ayushi and i are here discussing sexuality desire female pleasure and other fun things today mm. um let's talk a little bit about desire ayushi the scooty no it's a, it's a car <laughs> what are you saying it's not a oh, scooty it was a scooty <laughs> desire itself is um i don't think it's a word teenagers or young adults are that comfortable with um or that i don't know if everyone is like down to explore or express the kind of desires that they have in a safe way <laughs> yeah You're and right. the so there was a there was a statement which was like men have a great greater sexual desire than women and i was like um I don't I'm not sure true. about that exactly. So I did some research into the topic. I'm so proud of you. And um I discovered that m- most men think about sex at least once a day. What? Yes. Statistically, most men, like 90 something percent of men, think about sex at least once a day. That's like a lot I feel. Yeah. And women is like much less. Maybe like once every 2 3 days or whatever. Yeah. So that already is like on a biological level or a thought level it's that's the first difference that comes in like men think about sex more frequently but i discovered in my research mm-hmm. that when women experience desire it is less frequent than when men do but the intensity of that desire is equal to that of a man's sexual yeah, desire yeah 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 no i fully or any uh, other gender can believe that so that's great now we know this that all genders all sexes men and women and i'm guessing if they have done the research on uh people who don't conform to any of these genders also mm. uh the intensity of that feeling is equal the frequency might differ right and then i had a thought is it because women are repressed and they've not even been told that they can have desire yeah so then i got into that whole loop and my entire argument is coming from that perspective ki girls or people um who identify as such as uh, other there is no liberty or there is no permission almost given or they don't give themselves permission also because how can we you know society but there's no permission given to uh, women or people stop dancing around this i don't, I don't know how to s- how, why we have to be inclusive no of all but i'm saying I'm it is inclusive of everything it, it, I think people understand what we're trying to say is that people who are on uh, as and I actually you know what I realize one thing I'm I don't think we should speak for anyone else exactly. we, can we can speak, speak for, for women because uh, that's all I can I can identify with and speak on behalf of so it's fine um <laughs> let's see yes uh, yeah women I was I again I've lost it No no it's fine let's continue I want to keep all of this in the episode I'm not cutting this No no you don't need to cut it it's great you, Yeah because I also this dancing around is very like what do you say which is not offensive to anybody I'm trying to be inclusive and I am like I'm talking about most people everyone here everyone who has sexual desires and then there's asexual people who don't have or they might want romantic relationships but not want sexual relationships so that's different cuz sexuality is also a spectrum but that's like that goes back to what we've been saying all year that wherever you are on the spectrum it's okay absolutely just don't harm anyone absolutely that, that remember do no ac- harm yes. across the border across the spectrum there has been do no harm and consent C- bus and then the rest is you do you bro and explore till the ends of the earth if you need to do whatever you want Yeah, with consent. But don't let me know about it. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. It's private. <laughs> yeah, uh, so I think this uh, that's what I was saying like the gender inequality hmm. comes out even in this. Like there's an orgasm gap also. I'm sure I'm we sh- sh- of course there is. We all know about this. Yes. So like 91% of men usually reach orgasm and the number amount of women. So this is not an Indian survey of course because I couldn't find. Yeah, but, but whatever these statistics are, they say that 91% of men always reach climax and uh, only like f- Forty to forty something percent. Four percent. Forty four percent of women. Let's just say that. <laughs> I think that's also too high a number because one study had yeah. said twenty nine percent and one study had said I think sixty four percent. So I'm bringing it in the middle. Oh, you have done your own math. मैं अपना average खुद निकालती हूँ University of Rishikesh studies. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's it's. I think it's way less. 
um, if you ask me. Not like, oh, that sounds funny. Not just me ways. I mean, in general, from what you understand from women's sexuality, it is far less satisfaction guaranteed than it is for men. Absolutely. And this is also um, because I think for women, Hmm. pleasure and sexuality and the expression of it is more of a whole body experience and a whole mind and soul experience also. Yeah. Where uh, where it's called a... um, what is it called? Yes. Women prefer whole body sensuality is my note here. Okay. Uh, whereas men, I think it's just more concentrated to a particular area. Uh, sure. I'm sure in terms of like pleasure and uh, what is the word for? I guess erogenous zones. Is yes, that? sure. I'm sure that's also another personal uh, journey for everyone. Oh no, there that is. But then like there are also like erogenous zones which have been like stated but, by yeah, the yeah, because of your science. just your body's biology. Correct. It exists in a certain way in certain places. Yeah. But uh, um, I I would like to actually go back to the thing that you were saying that maybe women don't have such a guaranteed rate of say climax or satisfaction is because there's some subjugation or some subduing that has taken place over so many generations and so much social social structures and conditioning that um, we ourselves repress ourselves absolutely absolutely and I think that's a conversation that because as a young adult as a girl enjoy sex yeah in general and yeah, and that there's so much stigma around it, even talking about it. And I guess I'm contradicting myself only when I said that, oh, women should like, I guess I, I didn't say women shouldn't talk about it. I want everyone to talk about it as much as they want to talk With about it. With whoever they want to talk yeah, about that's it. that's kind of my Even if it's there. talking in the mirror <laughs> to yourself. Feel free. I do a lot of mirror talking. Not about this, but in general. Like I win so many arguments in the mirror. It's amazing. Um, but... That conversation where you don't feel comfortable to share and then when you share, you feel judged. Oh, yeah. That is something that needs to. Just we need to really work on it as like a group, as a community, as a, as a country, yeah. like what, as the world in general. Um, how is it that 50% of the population doesn't feel comfortable to talk about their bodies? And that's a very disturbing thought. And also having said that, I think men or the common man in India may not be comfortable talking about it either like sex has become something which is like poked fun at or there's like a lot of innuendo poked. and this double entendres in going on like non veg jokes for example oh our God. culture loves that shit and you know what I want to actually fight on behalf of is the non veg why community. are you calling it a non veg joke please stop I as a non vegetarian find that offensive offensive I have taken offense and yeah. I am triggered now fully because I will never be able to eat mutton biryani the same way again without thinking of your stupid dumb fuck jokes. And why you have to malign the non-veg community like this? Agreed. But See, they can't even say sex jokes. Or like dirty jokes. R-rated. R-rated. See, X-rated. You know, use these words. Don't bring the non vez into this. Yeah, I'm taking a stand. I'm signing a petition. I'm setting up a petition for this. <laughs> Ayushi. Renaming of non veg jokes. Yogi Adityanath, are you listening? Rename this shit also. I, in a weird way, I kind of hope Yogi listens to something of ours. Like, maybe he'll change. There's, there's... I don't think you really whatever. understand what we're chatting about, Ayushi. I know. <laughs> Because, you know, our appeal is always that we want intelligent listeners. So, just by that rule, he's eliminated. Um, However, circling back. Back to this. It's like women, your role in Indian society has been shadi karo, bache paida karo. So, this entire thing of sex being a procreation activity is, I think, very much drilled into Indian girls. And me, myself, like my mother told me, my virginity is a gift for my husband. (laughs) Mother, what? (laughs) But this was very many years ago. So imagine. I think even my mom was, she didn't say it like that. But Not she, in these words. Yeah, but I think the conversation was more that that is something that is a sacred thing between a husband and wife. I don't Which think means she was, people who love each other. I think is what they were yeah, trying to say. I, and she didn't say it only in terms of only women should uh, lose their virginity to marriage. I think she meant it more like, no, no, no. It should only be with the person that you are going to spend, like that you are in love with and you're going to spend the rest of your life with. Yeah. Now, that is a conversation that we had and I was like, that's crazy. <laughs> and we are going to have a conversation about it. 
and as much as she was comfortable with talking about it she did but then you know how my you know my mom she nods her head and she just walks off um but we make jokes we uh discuss it because i think the only way to normalize things is to actually have that conversation yeah now i joke about it with my mom all the time i was like how could you say that what a statement to make <laughs> it's a gift for your husband i was like yuck <laughs> he no get in no gifts like this I want the gift. I am the gift. I am the gift. That's Just true, actually. Uh, like head to the door. whole of me. I am the gift. Yeah. Um, but you had some interesting. I think when you did that show on Vice, mm. you learned a lot about the sexual appetite of Indians. I really did, and they're damn horny. <laughs> they're damn bloody horny as a country. Let me just tell you these words we hear being thrown around, na? Huh? Tharki. Like I think the default mode of. Ninety percent of Indian dudes is on tharak, and it's because nobody has taught them or nobody has told them that guys, there's a healthy way of expressing this shit. For example, masturbation is also like frowned upon. Mm. It is something which uh, kids are not informed about. Teenagers are bound to explore. Come on, yar. Come on. <coughs> Come on, means wake up. It's a twenty twenty. You think children are not going to be like one day? What's between my legs? What am I going to do with this guy in between my legs? And don't you think they're going to touch it or accidentally, like, r- brush something across it and be like, "Oh, that feels nice." The the but seeds think, of pleasure are like pulled out. But I think that comes down to just a lack of sexual education because I I also think, you know, to be honest. um i don't i feel like we should have asked our guy friends because when they had their first talk we they had it separately from us and i and i think they did discuss um like you know the whole, nightfall yeah and like wet dreams and yeah. your situation in the morning and whatever uh, goes under that bracket i think it was discussed with them i feel like we should have asked them but that equally should have been done for women which it for the girls which it correct. wasn't correct because people assume okay only boys are masturbating yeah and a you should be talking about because it, then at least people will be doing it in a healthy way in a respectful way Def. in a consensual way yeah because these things like people didn't talk about consent and we went to one of the best schools in the country and i don't think consent Nobody was touched upon at all but it's about consent and i also yeah and consent to your own body like you should i when i say consent to yourself is like you are consenting to this conversation with yourself, with yourself yeah. which i think is equally important you don't feel forced to have it allow yourself to do whatever you are comfortable with yeah but you should have that told to you i think because you're not born with an innate understanding of your body yep you get confused mixed messaging mixed signals and then you when you're not okay with what is okay and not okay that is when some sometimes it's it can be the root from where a uh, deviancy comes out mm. and when i say deviancy i mean like things like rape Bad and behavior. attacking and like yeah just like sexual offenses sexual offenses and they come from obviously some deep rooted mental issues it has to come from there because there's no other explanation as to why you would harm another human being in that way right it's a lot of things yeah it's, power yeah. um trauma uh, control uh, repression mm. like j- the general um system in our society which talks about like dominance over one another so these are all things that when you talk to a kid at a young age and you explain that it's equal the desire for the act is equal on both ends then you are less likely to be like no no i can just own this object whether yeah. it's a male or female whoever you have assaulted whoever the person has assaulted not you um like come on they have an equal right to enjoy this it's not only a one way street true but like also none of our popular culture has ever helped this narrative in fact it has just it has helped this narrative actually it's not helped the other narrative the one that we hope we need yeah, yeah. i mean that that's our personal <coughs> i mean definitely Gross. going to do an issue with like my problems with bollywood and how it has just ruined ruined this country and i i think it's also it's um not so much when you say ruined i, I mean say that it's a uh, mindset and the it's allowed the mindset to stay the same which is which yes, is wrong it's disturbing because it's 2020 you're seeing now you're seeing movies which is slightly but they're talking about sex and pregnancies and same sex relationships yeah. that's now 
Yeah. And it's still done in sometimes in a very tacky and over the top hammy kind of way where you're like well this was not the message at all. But yeah also but it's like you have to make it palatable to the common person in this country. Yeah yeah so it's I'm no no They I'm very to, happy that it's yeah, happening. Yeah. I'm saying it'll take us some time before it gets refined to a way more art house way. No. But uh the conversation is happening now. Yeah. So you can imagine how many decades of generations exist which has never had this conversation. Right. Like even things like family planning have that conversation. We have a population. You don't really want to talk about do. sex. Don't yeah. talk about sex. Talk, talk about, about family population. planning. Yeah, family planning. Safe, na hum do, hamare do. Ye sab to kiya tha. But uh, where? What's happening of that initiative is what I want to know. And with that gets a whole conversation linked of you know gender equality. Some people just keep having children because you know you want, want a boys, son or you yeah. want a specific gender, and it's like, okay, once again. not the take away message yeah and then you have your cultural and religious biases that enter so you're right dash in with the sexuality permeates a lot of the decisions that we make so it is an important topic to talk about so i will admit you were right i publicly take it back wow a moment yes and so, now you have it recorded <laughs> lovely i read a really uh, nice line in one of the articles It said men become intimate to get sex and women have sex to gain intimacy. And I don't think it's a blanket statement attacked. I don't think it's a blanket statement for all women and men, but I do think there is some element of truth no, no, to I this. No, I think there's a lot of truth to it. And it also said men are preheated, <laughs> women warm up to sex. I think that's also true. Women feel erotically neutral at the start of sex, then having a positive sexual experience helps them to warm up to it and then actually start to feel desire i think having a positive like have that statement is generally i think true for a lot of things that when you have a positive experience with a certain interaction Correct. you're more likely to desire it exactly. or want it again or feel comfortable doing it yeah. you know what i mean whether it's a uh, job or sex or uh, whatever it is yeah but for women like yeah. it is literally linked this, to that whereas for men it's just like sex is sex for But a lot it, of men and uh, And I think it just goes back to the whole idea of trauma. And if you've had a bad experience, you're traumatized by it, no. so you never want to do it again. Hundred percent. And why did you have that traumatic experience in the first place? Is because you never had the conversation, and no one had the conversation with your that partner, whoever that person was. That there are things that are okay and not okay. Yeah. Like, so I think sex education, education in general, my favorite line: education is a silver bullet. <laughs> it is going to cure all our ills and societal problems. This is just the but the right of kind it. of education that's the thing also yeah the lack of it and the and the poor quality of it yeah. that we deal with is the problem that's yeah. holding us back i truly feel so as a country when like that's what they were finding this out about like women who experience desire and what the libido situation in women is only 2% of women wanted like f- only for 2% of these women did sex precede desire I don't know no sorry which the desire precedes sex my bad for most of these women the sex came first and then the understanding of it and the exploration of it and then the desire of it right. comes afterwards but that's so sad it really is because uh, girls firstly though your own body is a wonderland for yourself <laughs> just want to tell you that um yeah do i have any other interesting stats to tell you about nahi bas yahi hai ye the stats bhi nahi hai it's just a uh, Is I just looking at a notebook? She just scribbled all over it. Okay. Oh, I have another interesting thing. No, it's like a thing I'd done in my res. So kind of like this Genghis Khan fellow. Men have that thing also. I want to spread my seed and perpetuate my genes. Why? They're not that special. Why to? Why to? But historically, there could be that element also. Why men are more proactive in the seeking sex department? My God, that's so sad. Yeah. Also, But please don't spread your seed so much. <laughs> there's like it. so many seeds out there in general, like too many. Um, but see, that's the thing, right? It's also sometimes the um, like the argument that people have against uh, the sexual spectrum, mm. same-sex marriages, or uh, whichever gender permutation combination you're putting out together. Mm. The one of the biggest arguments that people have against that is that oh. it's unnatural because you can't procreate right 
and that uh, reinforces the belief that your only job in union is to, to procreate. procreate exactly which is wrong from a biological perspective yeah sure our bodies are built to procreate because that is one of uh, like that is something that we are capable of doing yeah and because it's in our dna we do it but if we were only built to procreate teacher i have one very important question hmm. i am not saying this yeah but uh, okay no you say you finish your no, thought no 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 Ask why clitoris exists then why ma'am tell me teacher please ha huh? i mean i'm saying that there are flaws to that statement Correct. because your body is built for more than just procreation exactly i'm saying that is that's a, when you say something when people give that argument i'm my rebuttal is that but your body is not just a baby making machine now both sides of it whether you're the seed or the soil yeah there is more to you yeah and there is more mental at play there is more physicality at play so that is kind of the conversation that needs to be had and with children as well to let them know that there are safe and um ec- not i don't want to say acceptable but there are safe and good normal normal also sorry There's just a safe healthy. way to and healthy, yeah. Sorry, thanks. Healthy way to explore yourself and your body, and it's not just for one purpose. Yes, like a a woman's role is not just to have a child. No, it's not. It's also to cook and clean. Exactly, Aishi, <laughs> and iron her husband's clothes. Listen, you don't talk about ironing. I know you love it. You'll actually iron your husband's clothes. <laughs> Mainly because I just love to iron. Got it. I she wakes up every day and irons her clothes before work. Even yeah. the iron ones. Yeah, but I just love ironing. Weirdo. I find it really therapeutic. It's three wali. And like I love, like you know when you put the hot iron on something crumpled <sighs> and the creases go away. I love it like that. See, Therapy. pleasure, <laughs> pleasure, statistics, ironing. I'm just such a dateable person. <laughs> You're so sexy, Aishi. <laughs> Hey, hey! We have to talk about that before we wrap up this episode. We're not wrapping up. We're still talking about female pleasure. And I mentioned the clitoris. You think I'm going to just like mention it and run oh, away? I was so hoping we could skim. F you, Ayushi. F you all and listeners. Just find your clitoris, especially if you're women, because there are some thousands of nerve endings there, and it's the least you can do for yourself. Give yourself the gift of finding your own clitoris, and stimulate that shit till it makes you feel good. and enjoy your life please with your own self on your own terms find your own sexy feels for yourself is what i'm saying like forget everyone else i she's just looking down and avoiding all eye contact with me looking at the coasters looking at anything except my face at this point it's a body part clitoris i'm not so i'm a sweet little body part sweet little of course i'm not i'm not opposed to um the body part or the organ i'm not opposed to the clitoris at all i am just not comfortable with you <laughs> announcing this to all our listeners ki clitoris dhoondo yeah man maybe there's a I... play also called the vagina monologues if it ever plays in bombay or everywhere yeah, yeah, you yeah, listen yeah. to it actually there are clips of it on youtube and stuff also it's a book it's like an existing play written by eve ensler i think for women it's a very very important read no it's a good book in your teenage years I remember my parents went to watch it when I was a kid and they came back being like it's a great piece but you all can't watch it just yet you're too young but as soon as you guys are of age you must watch it and we did didn't we all go together to watch it were you with us I didn't we went I, to canvas yeah those- I missed it but I read the book great fab and in that there's an a- a- exercise yeah. which all the women in Listen, her class I, do I fully accept that I need to take some of my own advice and get like Yeah like most people are just like shying away from even looking at their genitals or private areas being like um it's ugly or oh this is not normal or x y z you don't know the biology and the structure of your own genital area how are you shit? expecting someone else to be able to find and give you pleasure if you can't f- figure it out for yourself so even Ensla who wrote the book she mm. was like yeah you can take a mirror and look at your vagina because that's the only way you're going to learn about it you have to make friends with your vagina i agree you guys did you ever read like judy bloom books i really did and i enjoyed it i think i have to give judy some credit, credit. also she made me uh, the woke little child i was exactly i did read judy bloom a lot and uh, i think i i would recommend it i would give it to young girls and boys for sure like i would make my kids read judy bloom 100% she was way uh, ahead of her generation i feel just brilliant really good 
truly understood childhood and teenage angst in a good way. Yeah. And your body changing. Yeah. That's really very smartly written books, I think. Yeah. Um, but no, yeah, I, I agree with what Tash said. Take the time, figure yourself out. Also, men can come once, Ayushi. Once. And that's it. It's over. Women legitimately can have multiple orgasms. And this is something uh, my... Sc- Oh God, this is hilarious. When we went 10th standard, Ayushi, 10th standard, sweet, innocent 15 year olds. <laughs> I remember one day sitting in class, okay? You we were in the same class in the yeah, 10th yeah, grade. Yeah. And uh, you, I used to sit next to a boy who was like a dear friend. One second, who? They'll bleep, bleep out the name, but then I used to sit next to each other, okay? Okay. This is my friend who is epic and all that. But uh, basically, in those days, I didn't understand female pleasure I didn't really talk about it or any of that but I remember him telling me one day he was like girl when you grow up it's going to be great because girls can have multiple orgasms he told me this in school bro in the 10th standard in the 10th grade this is the first info I've got about multiple orgasms from this sweet boy who used to sit next to me I uh, we're going to discuss this later because I just want to not that he was inaccurate more that what was he telling you this about? Oh no, we were talking about his girlfriend and his situation. We were like sitting next to each other for months. So we'd become like best friends and we would talk about our whole lives and all. Yeah, yeah like class part, like your seat seat partners. Seat partners like your are best like friend. best friends. Exactly. Yeah, because you spend the entire day sitting next to this <laughs> exactly, idiot. Exactly, I love that. And you just pray that they're smart so you can copy their tests. Lol, I'm smart. He was lucky. I used to copy for certain, uh, like for physics, I copied straight up. And yet we all failed. <laughs> So yeah, basically fem- uh, pleasure is so wow only because there is an opportunity for multiple orgasms. So poor women who are not even meeting that 90% rate of climaxing. Imagine, there's a probability that you could come like 3, 4, 5, 6 times during one sexual experience. But there are people who have not even come once. It's staggering and ridiculous. And the clitoris's only job is to give you joy and pleasure. Trust me on this. <laughs> Clit is your best friend. On that note, Aishi, I'm done talking about the clit. You can look up again. My God, don't lie. I'm looking at you. You are laughing. I'm just laughing. <laughs> um, I'm laughing because of the way you said it and the um, sort of intensity of the way you just announced it. Because I'm just laughing at that. Aishi, you know, honestly, I think if this country, this is my own hypothesis, firstly. Oh, this is from University of Ritha. Yes, correct. If everybody was sexually satisfied, no? Matlab, we wouldn't have any problems. Yeah, Yogi is definitely not getting it. I don't think many people in <laughs> positions of power or people running the country or people living in the country, I don't think anybody is sexually satisfied. And that is a big problem also. Economy to down, hey. Our <laughs> sexuality experiences are very down. In this chakkar, mein, we are not going to progress. Because, it, and... Uh, you're right about it in the sense of because it's a part of your fulfillment as a human person and your journey and your development and your mental uh, stability and state and you know what you're distracted by and what you're focused on and on a pure physical level yeah it's a f***ing release Ayushi it's a stress release yeah, purely yeah, yeah. it's a stress buster it's as simple as that like your skin glows you feel better if you have positive sexual experiences you are just like my Walking on sunshine, growled. your stomach has growled. Yeah, it's time for lunch. Okay, but you know, no, no, I I fully agree with everything that you said because there is a biology to it, and I I'm comfortable talking about the biology because of the it's body science. and because it's science. Um, there there are so many health benefits of a positive sexual experience. Yeah, and that has been documented. It's been researched. It's been talked about, and it's the reason because your body is built for it. Yeah, when the release of happy hormones and endorphins can do wonders for you. And whether you're exercising, which I also recommend, or you're engaging in physical acts of pleasure, that happy hormone is surging through your body. You're bound to be in a better mood. You're bound to have a way more, um, well, just like, you know, you're happy. <laughs> you yeah. just got laid. <laughs> yeah. So as long as, of course, it's positive and consensual and enjoyable for everyone, because those filters exist. That's key. That's key. From episode one till now, consent, consent is, is key. key. Uh, and consent also, I just want to touch upon this. There's different types of consent. There is a yes under duress, which is not a, which is not a yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There is a yes, which is informed, which is the only yes you want when a person says yes, knowing full well everything that is involved in it. 
a yes can turn to a no and that's okay and a yes can turn to a no at any point any point any point any damn point hello no. you we've all seen that tea video no the british explained consent with a tea with a cup of tea oh, if i, I see that. you want tea okay you said yes so i made you tea you say you don't want tea i'm not going to force it down your throat right yeah so we'll like share it. this ivm we'll share this video okay i haven't seen it but that makes sense it's like you come to my house i ask you when i have chai sure okay i make it for you then i bring it you're like actually i'm not in the mood No, you have to drink it. I made it for you. How can you say no? Um, that's that's funny. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, but th- that's yes. the thing. You have to be aware also of the kind of yes you are getting, and hey, you- and anyone out there, uh, whatever your sexual preferences and spectrum, whatever that jazz. Uh, when you say like a yes can be a yes under duress, yeah, that's existing. But I also feel like. You don't need to do anything to prove anything to, to anyone. anyone. No, like that yeah. is um, because I think a lot of people say that no, but I consented to it. But were you actually ready? Were you feeling comfortable? That's were it. You That's safe? key. Yeah, there are people who've had experiences where they weren't unsafe. They weren't. Uh, they weren't attacked. It wasn't like a. there was no consent involved because that's also very fair like those experiences happen and i don't think it's right to put the blame on someone but also why have you someone. said yes right. like you have to ask yourself like did you do it because you wanted to or did you do it because you thought that's the what you're supposed, supposed to, to do. do exactly and i don't think anyone has a right to even manipulate that um interaction from you i'm yeah and i think that's very important to like even young men and women today Absolutely. specifically with the way that teenagers and the way media sells you out, sex yeah. and makes it seem like oh this is like you have to be doing this to be cool or to be woke or to be like young and out there and energetic and a feminist and a men in this water whatever Nobody these words saying are. that that you have to do this to be a feminist ayushi no dash you don't understand the way that a conversation can change and the way that we are changing the conversation that's true i don't want it to go the opposite way where a person who thinks that to be a urban city girl or to be a confident young independent woman she has to also be having sex no but you have to be at least in touch with yourself that much i say you have to yeah but that's a different conversation agreed that's one you have with yourself Correct. and the internet yeah but um You don't have to do anything to prove anything to anyone else. That's definitely the peer pressure. That's the thing, no? Yeah, and if you are in your twenties and thirties and you haven't had a sexual experience, that's, that's fine. fine. Like you're not lesser for it, and you're not going to be. Um, uh, I don't think that you should make your experiences forced. So that you think you can tick off some mental box or some uh, societal you're probably check box. Probably like if you. Anyway, I think yeah, everyone has to wait till they're ready to yeah. do it with a partner, and the uh, whatever you feel in that moment is the right partner. You just have to check in with yourself and make sure you're comfortable and you're doing it for the right reasons. Like Ayushi, you said, yeah, and I'm so glad you mentioned it because yeah, we do feel pressured somewhere. Oh, all my friends are having sex. Maybe I should be having sex too. Um, oh shit, I'm 23 and I've never had sex. Whatever it is, it's BS. Yeah, and like whether you're. Seventeen, eighteen, or like in your thirties, or 30, whatever it whatever. is, <clears throat> it's your individual journey. It's how your timeline is. It's not a race. Yeah, it's not a sprint. This is like life is a marathon, a marathon. right? So there's there's a long way to go. Yeah, and you're gonna be having sex for many years. So yeah, and inshallah, it's. consensual it's pleasurable it's safe yep. you're enjoying it and you're enjoying your body and your partner and i i do wish that for all our listeners yeah in like a very normal like it's a true desire of mine for you to have your desire fulfilled absolutely in a healthy healthy way. way safe way for you yeah um always be safe i these are just some like top tips is like safe consent contraception contraception i'm going to spell that out condoms or morning after pill is not contraception you can't have sex without a condom and then take a eye pill in the morning sorry like ladies it's so bad for you yeah it's an emergency situation exactly um whether you're on birth control or not have that conversation with your physician it is important ask ask him or her what is right for you given your lifestyle 
yeah. and your own hormonal and body chemistry because that's also something to uh, think about. Yeah. There are multiple things that you can use as a contraceptive if you're if you're a sexually active person. Yeah, and if the dude you're having sex with says he doesn't like to wear condoms, then you can like someone else. Yes. Uh and um get tested. People in this country do not take that seriously Are enough. Are you she these labs these path labs also don't know what tests you're talking about when you go in for a std test for example they be like which test madam okay well we will post this because i think this is important i think this like having studied in in different countries i will say that's something that was a very normal conversation that people had people was like getting tested when was the last the time, time you yeah. were tested when was the last time you checked yourself out and that's so important because a lot of sexual diseases are latent yeah and they kind of come up with other yeah. um issues and then you then sometimes it's too late you know yeah. so get ahead of this curve and be proactive in terms of testing yourself and specifically if you are sexually active make sure you're doing that for yourself yeah. and for the whoever other that, person that's not whoever, fair yeah. so that anything else i don't know we want to talk a bit about being sexy you know aishi ha huh. i want to touch upon it a little bit should i start Yeah sure you are the one who re- routinely feels sexy but you know it's taken a whole lifetime because nobody tells you that it's something you can feel it's a word you've heard thrown around when like the hot uh, actress is doing a, an item number as a sexy cover of a magazine oh wow so sexy so sexy so you don't really know what sexy means no i've also heard it my whole life in a like it was never for me and right. i don't think anybody can tell you ki acha now you're sexy and then you start feeling sexy It's something really that comes from within, and really, I think so. Shit, I mean, not shit. That's uh, that's good, but I've never felt sexy my whole life. Ever, not one moment, Aishi. There have been moments where I felt desirable, where I was like, okay, no, like I look good, and I have, and in my life, in certain experiences and situations, I have felt very desirable and desired. Like that's not uh, the issue. and that's also because like i know from just my track record i've dated enough people to know that i am a desirable you person you really are though um but i've never lo- i've never looked in the mirror or looked at myself and said oh my god you look sexy and like i have thought you are sexy for years like genuinely like like genuinely like just as the word is hmm. and if i were to like yeah ayushi is a very sexy woman i would say but see i mean that's very kind of you to say and thanks very much you're welcome <laughs> but <laughs> um maybe you tell like this uh, proves your point that you just saying it to me doesn't make me feel it exactly. because even me sitting here right now you, you don't believe you're it. telling me honestly that you think that i'm kind of like oh tash just is obsessed with me so it's okay it doesn't really matter but it, so i guess it does have to come from within and there's a lot of exploring i should do myself as to why i don't think i am sexy and also it's that whole notion of society has fed you or so this is sexy na sexy means different things to different people Yeah, and that yeah, also yeah. should be explored. What makes you feel sexy? Yeah, yeah, and it can be very small things, I guess. Just, uh, but you know, then that circles back to the whole thing. Like, are you okay with your body? Are you okay with what you see in the mirror? Are you secure? Are you um, comfortable with yourself? Do you love yourself? You can't lo- expect anyone to love you till you love you. All is one web, web, very big web. Yes. So, I think again, I I've said this like six times. This conversation. that that is a conversation you need to have with yourself yeah and i hate to repeat words in consecutive sentences but it's true all right then i think that's it we um i've had fun doing this episode and i still feel like we have lots more to unpack okay, but, but we'll circle back to this after um, like a few uh, a months, few months. Yeah. yeah because you have, we have to be okay with my comfort level but i have to say this was not a difficult episode to do and i think um thank you for keeping it as kosher as we could because it's because normal it, yeah you know. and this is my level of comfort which is to be respected as well totally fine and um yeah stay safe and stay safe consent is key consent is key consent oh, is key say this valentine's day is around the corner if you ask someone <laughs> out they say no that's fine no means no move on find another person who's interested in you if not you know celebrate it with your valentines like we are doing Dude, celebrate Valentine's Day with anyone that you love exactly. or that you care about or that you would like to let them know that you care. Uh I don't do this, but you should send that text. You should send that 
WhatsApp message, whatever you want to like, reach out, reach out, send the DM, fall, press the follow button, whatever it is that you think is going to help you get one step closer to a person or someone that you're interested in, do it in a I, safe, healthy way. Yeah, I've shot my shot before, and um, it's worked. Yep, it's yep. like it's worked like hardcore. Yep. So uh, don't feel shy. Confidence is sexy, actually, though, Aishi. And I will say, in women as, especially, yes, and I th- in men as well. Like Agreed. I, I find on a personal level, me, I find confidence very sexy, and I like a man who shoots his shot, because I think it's like a, it's good. You're because I don't enjoy gams. Gams, ko isko nahi khelna. Sorry, we are not. Kiladis. I don't have the time only. Literally so if you though. say that, hey, I'm interested. Let's grab a cup of coffee, or something. she wants an alcoholic beverage. <laughs> coffee. Not for five days. That's true. <laughs> so done. <laughs> okay. Well, um, this ran really long. Thank you for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed it. Share your thoughts. Share your feelings. If Ayushi, um, if you slide into her DMs uh, and you can like address me, I am. She will make sure the messages reach me. <laughs> yeah, because Dasha has so many fans, and I know that's not going to reach her. So exactly, I always send her all the DMs that you amazing people send us, and also you I can let send in know. questions to IVM. A podcast on their Instagram or Twitter, and we'd be happy to answer any questions. Yeah, that you send into the IBM official page. We want to keep. We want to start doing that. Actually, is that if you have any questions for Agla Station Adulthood, the two of us, or even if it's just individually, please write them in. We'll address them each episode. We'll do like a little on Twitter. Q and A. Happy to. I just love to engage. Great then, because I am not engaged. So does that bring us to the end of yet another episode of Agla Station Adulthood? Yes. Aishi? By the way, this is our twenty fifth episode. Bolo. Yeah. So thanks for listening in for 25 weeks. And if you liked this episode, don't forget to uh, check out all the other interesting podcasts on the IVM network. You can listen to us on IVM Podcast app or IVMPodcast.com. You can also follow us on social media. We are at IVM Podcast on Twitter and Instagram. Send in the questions like we told you to. And if you want to reach out to me and Ayushi personally, I am at R-Y-T-A-S-H on Instagram. And I am at just Ayushi on Twitter and at Ayushi A9 on Instagram. Yeah, keep it safe. And keep it clean also, man. Yep, and keep it consensual. Yeah, shower before you have sex. Hygiene is key. Consent is key. Oh. <laughs> Let's go. Enjoy Valentine's Day, bitches. Consent is key. Oh. Do you wish you were smarter? Well, so do we. But the next best thing? We could make you sound smarter. And to help you with this endeavor, we are Simplified. A podcast uh, that attempts to break down the complex world around you with a little knowledge, a lot of poor jokes and a ton of random trivia. Episodes out every Monday. On the IVM podcast app or wherever you get your podcasts. See ya! घड़ी के टिक टिक के बीच अब वक्त हो चुका है टपरी पे मिलने का चाय या कॉफी के साथ टपरी टेल्स सुनने का सोचिए अगर आपकी मम्मी अक्का दादी नानी जीजी आजी भी आपके साथ इस चाय की टपरी पे एक चुस्की लेने आ जाए तो कैसी बातें होंगी उनकी कहानिया कितनी नई या पुरानी होगी एक्चुअली ना टपरी पे पहली बार ये उनकी जुबानी होगी तो मिलिए इन नए किरदारों ऐसी हर गुरुवार टपरी टेल्स आरोप चाय की प्याली एक नई कहानी विद माधुरी अडवाणी ऑन आईवीएम पॉडकास्ट ऐप वेबसाइट और वेर एवर यू गेट योर पॉडकास्ट फ्रॉम